Hey, what's up you guys? Brian Schill, Determined Dad here. I want to make a quick video today just kind of talking about my own personal experiences with um, college and not finishing it, getting a trade, you know, and just how that's benefited my life, you know. I was trying to come up with like a, you know, a well articulated video that would like lay out all the ins and outs, the pros and the cons of going to college or just getting into a trade. But I figured it'd probably just be easier if I just kind of genuinely just talk about my own experience. So, you know, anyways, roll the intro. Well, so welcome to the channel, right? My name is Brian Schill. I'm the Determined Dad. And so on this channel, I just like to talk about just kind of my own personal experiences, kind of help myself just kind of get my brain moving, but also to possibly help other people with the life experience that I do have at 29 years old, right? With that said, with that out of the way, you know, welcome here. If you've seen the video, if you get any value from it at all, you know, like, subscribe and share it uh, with, you know, other younger men, right? So a little bit of background about myself. I'm Brian Schill, I'm 29 years old, I'm in Southern California, currently live in Arizona, right? Uh, super happy I made that move, but we have a 20 month old son who we just adore, right? Um, he was born back in 2021 and been married to my wife for a little over two years now. Okay, so college, right? So I'll say a little bit about more about, you know, college and, and trades, right? And mainly I was just thinking about how blessed and fortunate I am um, and my family is to just have the living situation that we have the, the somewhat minimal like debt that we have right and and the lifestyle that we have and You know we have all of it w without a college degree. My wife has a dual major college degree But uh, she's currently a full-time stay-at-home mom. So uh, she's not actively, you know using that degree But she's doing something that honestly is much more important to me right raising our kids So, you know, I started going to college when I graduated high school. Gotta hit the coffee, right? I graduated high school back in 2011. And I remember going to college initially, Cal State Fullerton, with kind of the intention of, you know, really not knowing what the heck I wanted to do, you know? It was kind of like a lot of the, a lot of the propaganda, a lot of like the news and the, the media and everything would, would just kind of tell you like if you, if you didn't go to college, you were just going to be flipping burgers your whole life or you'd end up under a bridge somewhere or whatever. And of course, none of that's true, but you know, everyone wants to be like the CEO at the top of the company with all the underlings underneath them, right? And nobody wants to view themselves as like the bottom tier worker. And at the time, the, the thought was if you didn't go to college, that's who you're going to be. So. So here I was in college, no idea what the heck I want to do, and uh, it's costing money, right? Didn't make it through college. I ended up joining the Navy when I was 20. One of the many reasons I believe in God and I believe that there's a plan for everybody is that, like, if I look back on my life, it's like decisions that I made got me to where I am now, but they were not calculated decisions. Like a lot of. A lot of what I did, I was just, I was just winging it, you know, I was just winging it. And I really think that God is kind of looking out for me and providing for us. So, which is great. I, I do the Navy when I'm 20 years old, um, go into it, uh, Naval nuclear power program, right? So basically it's just, uh, I just learned how to like monitor and maintain reactor protection systems on a, on a submarine. Sounds really fancy, really isn't that difficult. Um, I just kind of was blessed with like the ability to remember a lot of things pretty quickly, right? So you go through the school, you learn a lot, you, you know, you learn a lot really fast. If you're able to remember all the things you learn really quickly, you take some tests, uh, you know, fast forward and then you graduate, whatever, right? So I do that for six years um, and I knew I wanted to get married. I wanted to get married to, uh, you know, to my beautiful wife who I have now. Uh, uh, she's she's just, she's amazing, right? So I met her back in 2017 while I was still in the Navy. And I knew kind of after a year or two of dating, I really wanted to marry her, but I just didn't want to do it in the military. Uh, uh, anyways, so get out of that 2019. And you know, the decision point is like, do I go back to college, right? Or do I just keep working, right? I kind of mathed out like the, the earnings that I could make with, with my own personal work experience, right? You go to college and you get a certain degree in whatever. Let's, let's say you're gonna work a job, you expect to get out and you're gonna make like $70,000, $80,000 a year. Um, with whatever degree, right? Well, first of all, like that's not guaranteed, right? Like you're just, a lot of people just hope that those jobs are available to them. And they're not always, 
you know, they're not always available to them. So a lot of times people go to get these majors, they get these degrees, and then they end up working at like Walgreens or something because there's nothing else available, right? So, so there's that, but there's also the lost time. There's the lost time of like going to school and getting that degree. During those four to five years that you're doing that, those are years that you could be progressing in a specific field, in a specific trade, gaining work experience, moving up the ladder, whatever, right? Making connections, right? Connections are huge. So, yeah, you know? So I kind of just thought about that, and I knew I wanted to get married, and I knew we wanted to have kids soon, and I knew I wanted to find a place to, like, live. And I was like, you know, this doesn't really make too much sense to me. So I figured, hey, you know, like this might be the wrong move, but I'm just, you know, screw it, man. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, kind of like electrical work, right? And so I start doing that and, you know, honestly, things, things, have been, things have been amazing, right? Like, you know, while I was working for the company I was working for uh, when I first got out of the military, in that amount of time, you know, we were living in an apartment and then we bought a, you know, bought, in air quotes, right? Uh, a bank helped us purchase um, a condo in Southern California. Value went up in such a way that we were able to like sell it, move out of California, move to Arizona. So where am I going with this, right? So the point of everything I just said, <laughs> and like my whole story, one, you know, don't just listen to, like if you're, if you're a younger dude, if you're a younger dude and you're trying to make that decision, right? Like, let it be your own decision. Let it be your own decision, whatever you end up doing. If you end up going to college or if you end up going into like a, like a high skilled blue collar trade, if, if you're making that decision, let it be your decision, right? Like, you know, ask people for advice, but, but ultimately when the time comes to choose, you need to be the one to choose, all right? Because whatever choice you end up making, you need to be able to look back later on and own that decision, own that decision, right? And you're gonna either be able to own your success, that was me, I made this decision, Awesome, right? And at the same time, if it was a bad decision, then you'll rest in the comfort of knowing like you won't be mad at anyone else, right? Like it was all you, all up to you. You own it, you learn from it, and then you're like, okay, you know, where do I go from here? So you make your decision. The second thing, <laughs> really research it. Like really think about it. Like, okay, you know, if I'm 18 years old now and I'm gonna go to college, and I'm gonna go there for five or six years to get this degree, and I'm expected to make X amount when I get out, right? Compare that to, okay, if I become like an electrical journeyman or something, and that takes me like however many, that takes me like a year and a half or two years or something, right? Um, and then I start working at that, right? Just, just do some math and just track it over a period of time, you know? And the, set, the third thing I would advise is that whatever you end up choosing to do, whether it ends up being college or whether it ends up being like, again, a blue collar trade or something, is you know have it be useful have it be useful to other people you know have it provide value you know like real value like things that people can tangibly like that they can see and they can they, they can feel and touch and experience right so like if you're an electrician you're able to provide power to someone's house right like if there maybe wasn't any before you can do all kinds of industrial work, right? You can be involved in real stuff that keeps the world moving, right? The same thing with any other type of trade, but, uh, and then if you go to college, like have that degree be something that's, that's useful to people, right? Chemical engineering or, or whatever, right? Um, food processing. My whole thing is, you know, whether you go to college or whether you don't go to college, the, the one thing I would look out for moving forward in the future that I really think that I have room to speak to is just don't have it be a fluff job. Like, that doesn't do anything, right? Like, the type of jobs that when there's like an economic recession, they just get whacked first, right? Like, and these people end up out of work. So, thing, a lot of things that people would typically call pink collar or that I would call like, like a mid-tier white collar job, right? Like if you're providing a very simple service to somebody that can easily be replaced, or if you're like, you know, making Excel spreadsheets for somebody else that don't really matter, like that's the type of position you don't want to be in because when you're as, when you're a young man that's growing and you want to get married in the future, and provide for your family, you want the type of work that like rain or shine, right? No matter what's going on in the economy, you want the type of work that's going to like solidify your economic earnings, right? That's going to make things like stable for your family, right? And, you know, the last thing I'd really kind of mention to it too is, you know, 
think about the type of people that you'd be working with. Like I'm a huge team guy. Right. If anyone's familiar with uh, Vox Day's social sexual hierarchy, I consider myself a little bit of like a Bravo um, with kind of strains of like a Delta in me. Right. So I'm not necessarily like a huge natural born leader, although I kind of fill that role sometimes. But I'm a, I'm a big team player. Right. <laughs> I like I like having a really strong leader that I can look to, that I can back up. Right. Kind of be like a lieutenant to, and you know help help him succeed, help the team succeed. So. That being said, with me being like a team guy, it's uh, the the quality of workers, like the quality of people that, that I get to work with on a daily basis is like amazing, right? It's amazing. You know, you joke together, you can laugh together, you can do whatever. So just think about that stuff too. If you're in like an office environment, um, are you going to have as much fun and joy as if you were out in like an industrial yard, you know? putting stuff together with a bunch of dudes and it's almost like you're all just kind of hanging out. You're just putting stuff together while you do it, right? So there was one more thing, one more thing that I forgot to mention. I was kind of watching back the videos, realized I never talked about it. So I'll just drop it in here real quick. The biggest factor that I the really, truly, like the biggest thing that I would um, actually say is that uh, consider like the amount of debt that you'll take on, right? Like really think about that. Really think about your debt. You know, student loans are like a really huge hot topic right now, uh, or at least they were a few weeks ago. You know, people arguing about them being forgiven or not being forgiven, right? I have my own opinion about that and that's fine. When you're choosing to go to college, just think about your debt, right? So the whole thing with debt is that it's the only way for you to make yourself a slave, right? Like it's a useful tool, right? I know there's like a lot of finance people out there that love debt. Uh, it's a very useful tool. Like I wouldn't have the house that I live in right now if I didn't take out a mortgage, which is debt, right? So to me, there's like a time and a place for debt and the willingness to sign a contract accepting that you have to keep paying people, which means that you have to keep working, right? So, you know, you kind of do sign yourself into a certain form of economic slavery, but there's also really like there's superfluous and silly debt too. Like there's, and to me, when you're factoring in your college earnings, like, like the, the money you'll earn with the degree you get from college, um, it's really important to factor in what the debt payment's gonna be month over month on that, right? And there are loans that you can't default on either, like because I think like whatever the terminology is, basically the federal government kind of just like guarantees, they, they basically guarantee the banks that they're gonna be paid by you, like so, so you have zero way to default on these loans. So you will have them until they're paid off you know, no matter what, if it ends up being 300 bucks a month, then th there you go. You're going to have that for forever, basically until you pay it. So, whereas typically if you go into a kind of like a higher skilled blue collar trade, you don't have that. Uh, usually the, the expenses are much lower to get uh, that kind of schooling. And what do I mean by high skilled blue collar trade? I typically mean like, so there's like a lower skilled blue collar labor, which might be your run of the mill landscaper that you see everywhere, right? Like someone, or maybe someone that just moves rocks, right? Just picks up rocks. Like, I'm not saying it's not important work. It is important work, right? I'll, everyone has value. Everyone's labor has some form of value to it, right? No one's just, like I thought the whole term like essential worker back in 2020 was silly. I thought it was dumb because it, it like dehumanizes people, right? Everyone's labor is essential to somebody, but there is a difference in like skill set. There's a difference in how hard it is to do something. But yeah, right? So high skill blue collar work, electrician, plumber, right? Uh, industrial mechanic, right? Like these are the types of things. These are the, the, the things that keep society moving and that keep people alive and that keep us progressing forward in the physical real world. These are the type of things that people might wanna focus on if they're choosing to go into a line of blue collar work, right? With that said, uh, Brian Schill, Determined Dad, let me know in the comments down below what you think, what you like about it, uh, what you disagree with, whatever, right? Like and share it if you had value from it. Um, don't if you didn't, whatever, right? I do this for fun. I don't care either way. But hopefully somebody, hopefully somebody gets some value out of it. So with that said, peace. Stop.